This is the Beechcraft King Air 300, an aircraft that performs like a traditional mid-sized jet at a fraction of the cost, reaching speeds of up to 350 knots. The King Air 300 can also climb and perform up to 35,000 feet, offering the luxury of high altitude and comfort for its passengers and compared to most turboprop competitors who operate in the mid-20,000s, the King Air 300 reigns supreme. In the early 1980s, Beechcraft sought to improve their abundantly popular Super King Air 200 series with a new reincarnation. They wanted to go faster, increase their capable load, and overall throw in more power to an already strong aircraft. To do this, they started with the 200 series airframe, and after a few modifications, mostly just straightening the edges and redesigning the cowlings, they looked for more power, specifically to Pratt & Whitney out of Canada. Attaching the ever-powerful PT-6A68A to the airframe proved to be a goldmine, because from there, the specs rocketed up. After a few interior updates, the King Air 300 prototype was tested in 1983, and the next year, Beechcraft started taking orders. And today, with the Black Hawk conversion, this plane becomes so fast that Black Hawk likes to call it the fastest King Air on the planet. More about this in the engine and performance section. Stay with us till the end of the video because here is everything you need to know about the Beechcraft King Air 300. Stepping inside, the cabin measures approximately 16 feet 8 inches or 5.08 meters in length, 4 feet 9 inches or 1.45 meters in width, and 4 feet 10 inches or 1.47 meters in height, providing a total cabin volume of 300 cubic feet or 8.5 cubic meters. The standard cabin setup features club seating, and the leather seats are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also ergonomically designed to provide ample support during longer flights. Each seat is equipped with individual controls for adjusting recline and an array of positions to cater to personal comfort preferences. In terms of cabin amenities, the King Air 300 is equipped with a refreshment center that includes storage for hot and cold beverages and snacks, which can be customized to meet the needs of passengers. Additionally, the cabin features multiple 110-volt or 220-volt power outlets for charging electronic devices. The lighting system provides an adequate illumination level that adjusts to different phases of flight, from bright, energizing light during active periods to a softer, more subdued ambience for relaxation. The King Air 300 can also be outfitted with advanced connectivity options, including high-speed Wi-Fi, which supports streaming and web browsing capabilities. One of the most commendable aspects of the cabin is its noise level. The aircraft employs soundproofing techniques that significantly reduce the noise, which makes for a quieter flight experience that is quite comparable to that of light jets. Additionally, the environmental controls are another highlight, offering passengers the ability to adjust cabin temperature to suit individual comfort levels. And the pressurization system is capable of maintaining a sea level cabin altitude up to an altitude of 24,000 feet or 7,315 meters. And finally, storage space within the cabin is ample for a turboprop of this size, with generous compartments overhead and additional storage areas strategically placed throughout the cabin, providing a total volume of 54 cubic feet or 1,530 liters. Now, let's step into the cockpit. The original avionics suite of the Beechcraft King Air 300 predominantly featured analog instruments and early generation digital avionics typical of the era. Ergonomically, the cockpit is laid out thoughtfully with critical switches and controls positioned within easy reach of the pilot. This design philosophy extends to the overhead panel as well, which is cleanly organized, ensuring that environmental controls, lighting switches, and other essential settings are logically grouped and accessible. Visibility is another aspect where the King Air 300 excels. The design of the windshield and side windows allows for unobstructed views. The cockpit's pressurization and environmental systems also contribute to maintaining an optimal environment. The original avionics suite predominantly featured analog instruments and early generation digital avionics typical of the era. Key components of the original King Air 300 included electromechanical gauges and basic navigation systems such as a dual VOR and ILS receivers. Additionally, it featured an automatic direction finder, which was a common navigational aid used to determine the aircraft's relative bearing from a radio beacon. 
The suite also incorporated a distance measuring equipment system for communication, the cockpit was equipped with dual communication radios, and the original transponder supported basic mode A and C functionalities. If you're looking to modernize, a popular upgrade is the Garmin G1000 NXI avionics suite, which features a PFD and two MFDs. The integrated avionics system includes synthetic vision, which provides a clearer picture of terrain, obstacles, and traffic, even in IFR conditions. The G1000 also includes features such as the GFC 700 autopilot, which provides features like electronic stability and protection, underspeed protection, and coupled go-around capability. Furthermore, the integration of the AFGS, TCAS, and EGPOS ensures comprehensive safety coverage. Now let's talk about the engine, performance specifications, and how it flies. The Beechcraft King Air 300 is powered by two Pratt & Whitney Canada PT6A60A engines with a TBO of 3,600 hours, each producing 1,050 shaft horsepower. The aircraft requires about 3,950 feet or 1,200 meters of runway to take off at sea level on a standard day and has a maximum takeoff weight of 14,000 pounds or 6,300 kilograms and a full fuel payload of 1,560 pounds or 707 kilograms with a ceiling of 35,000 feet or 10,670 meters. So how do you further improve upon the near perfect King Air 300? The answer is more horses. There's no substitute for horsepower, right? Fortunately, that's the cornerstone of thinking at Blackhawk Aerospace based in Texas. Blackhawk figured out how to bolt bigger engines on the King Air 300 with its XP67A conversion. The climb rate for the stock King Air 300 at an average weight and density altitude is 2000 FPM after lifting off the runway, whittling down to about 1000 FPM as it levels off at FL280. This is not an RVSM airplane and we don't yet see the need to go into RVSM airspace. Generally, you flight plan for 290 knots. You can see a few flights where you reach 305 knots, but only when the temperature and altitude are optimal. You could push the power more, but this is a conservative estimate. The power is set at a slightly low 775 degrees ITT, regardless of the altitude selected. This provides an average fuel flow of 335 pounds per hour for each engine. So a stock King Air 300 is no slouch and will flat out perform. While standard issue engines are rated at 1,050 shaft horsepower, Blackhawk's 67A is thermodynamically capable of producing 1,200 SHP thanks to a fourth axial compressor wheel. The stock engine has three. But to conform to the airplane's type certificate, the engine's torque is dialed back so that maximum power meets the rated 1,050 shaft horsepower level. On the Blackhawk version, you can flight plan for 330 knots and you're never disappointed. It burns about 404 pounds per hour on average each side to produce that performance, which is not top end. Again, you can push the power lever forward more, reaching a whopping 350 knots on a total fuel burn of 840 PPH or 63 GPH per engine. Also, where plain Jane King Air 300s have PT6A60A engines with 820 degree ITT limits, the PT6A67A engines Blackhawk installs can run with ITTs as high as 840 degrees. And the cruise performance is only the beginning. The best part about the extra horses is the climb. With full fuel, six passengers plus bags, and standard air density, you routinely see climbs greater than 3,500 FPM at 160 knots. So a climb to the flight levels is super quick, even jet-like. You rotate off the runway with a 3,500 FPM climb rate, and that dwindles down to 1,800 FPM when leveling off at FL 280. Simply put, climb performance is never a question with the Blackhawk XP67A. In case you missed it a few paragraphs ago, the Blackhawk XP67A conversion burns more fuel, significantly more fuel. To go from 335 PPH to 405 PPH is a 21% increase. For that penalty, the airplane gains 43 knots, 333 knots compared to 290 knots, a 15% increase in speed. Is it worth it? For some, yes. For some, no. The greatest consideration is the length of the average trip. 
If you've got a long way to go, a 43 knot increase in speed is significant. If you're flying shorter trips, then the increase in speed is not worth the cost. Also, if you've got a long way to go, the fuel burn on the overall trip is about the same. The Blackhawk 300 burns more per hour, but it operates for fewer hours, making the fuel burn a net neutral consideration on long legs. And finally, the aircraft has a maximum range of 1,480 nautical miles, which is 1,700 miles or 2,740 kilometers, and a minimum landing distance of 2,700 feet or 820 meters. Now let's talk about the price and cost. The base purchase price for a new Beechcraft King Air 300 was $3.6 million before options. But today the price for a used model is $1.5 million to $3.5 million. And the charter price is estimated at $2,000 to $4,000. While the annual fixed cost is estimated at $200,000 to $300,000, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $1,000 to $2,000. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.